The new Polar Whoop Strap alternative is now officially called the Polar Loop, and it might turn out to be one of the Whoop Strap's main competitors. Now, these are the major announcements, and let's start with the TLDR. Polar Loop is a screen-free, subscription-free wellness band focused on 24-hour activity, sleep, recovery, and heart rate. It syncs to the revamped Polar Flow app and it's priced at $179.90 US dollar or euros with pre-orders starting September 3rd and shipments beginning around September 10th. So it's basically a Whoop style form factor and insights, but without a membership fee, at least that's how they're selling it. But we'll have to see if it's as good as the Whoop strap. There are a few things to like and some things I would have liked to see differently. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, it's pretty clear that the Polar Loop is a Whoop Strap competitor, where Amazfit was the first to take a major step as a Whoop competitor with the Amazfit Helio Strap. Polar is now doing the same thing with their Loop. It is relatively lightweight at about 29 grams with a small 42 by 27 by 9 millimeter footprint and it's water resistant up to 30 meters and it's built around Polar's Precision Prime optical heart rate sensor plus accelerometer. Now this is actually not the same sensor as you find in the latest Vantage lineup of Polar watches, so not the Elixir sensor, but an older sensor as we saw for instance in the Ignite 3 and the Pacer Pro. Battery life is up to 8 days and it charges by USB-C with a standard Polar charger and there is a replaceable battery unit inside though you probably cannot do it yourself. Memory should be enough for roughly 4 weeks of data if you go off the grid and it's waterproof for up to 30 meters. Now it has Bluetooth 5.1 but there's only one Bluetooth signal so you cannot connect it to gym equipment. It comes in 3 colors, I think the first one is called grayish sand, night black and brown copper and you can mix and match bands and metal buckles and extra bands should be available in many more colors. Now as I mentioned before the price is about 180 US dollars or euros or about 150 pounds in Britain. And you can start ordering now and shipment should start about a week from now. Oh, and the extra bands are priced at about 20 euros or dollars or about 16 pounds. Oh, and there's no biceps band announced yet. It might be coming in the future, but we're not sure for now. Now, as I would see it, the loop band, like many of these bands from either Amazfit or Whoop, try to track three main things. There's sort of that 24 seven tracking, there's sleep tracking, so things during the night and activity tracking. So first of all, it tracks your activity and health 24 seven by counting your steps, your distance travel, trying to calculate your calories burned, active time, it nudges you when you're inactive and a personalized daily activity goal. The heart rate is continuous day and night with the frequency changing depending on your level of activity. During sleep, it also locks things like your heart rate and heart rate variability. So that's sort of that 24 second tracking, which already includes some activity or sleep. But second, specifically for the sleep, it also focuses on your sleep and recovery metrics. So you get sleep stages, but also polar specific metrics like your nightly recharge, sleep wise, and a suggested bedtime window called sleep gate. And then third, and probably most importantly, it also tracks your training. And the big trick here is automatic training detection. So you can just start moving and the loop begins recording a workout automatically in the background, and it uses an other indoor as the default sport. Afterwards, in the Polar Flow app, you can relabel it to any of Polar's roughly 170 sports profiles. Now, automatic training detection captures the duration and real-time heart rate at a high frequency, and it of course also calculates the Polar cardio load. But as I said, the activity will then be labeled as other indoor. You can change this in the app, but if you want more control, you have to start a session from the Polar Flow app and have the loop do the recording without keeping the phone on you, or you keep the phone with you and that also then enables connected GPS. So you will not get GPS with just the loop. You have to have your phone with you. If you have your phone with you, you'll get GPS based speed, distance and route data on top, but this is all on the phone. So again, there's no GPS built into the loop, but basically none of these straps have GPS built in. So the way Polar is trying to sell this to you is sort of wear it and forget it. There's no screens, there's no buttons, which for many people is actually the point. But of course, that also means there's a number of downsides. As we mentioned, there's no GPS on the device. So if you want your routes or your underarm pace, you have to use your phone and keep it with you. 
And because it's screenless, if you do want to track which activities you did without having your phone on you, you will always have to change that later on in the app. And as we also mentioned before, Loop only has one Bluetooth connection at a time, so you cannot broadcast your heart rate to a second device. If you need heart rate broadcasting to gym equipment or to other apps simultaneously, this isn't the tool for that. Now, if you already wear a Polar watch and you also want to get a Polar Loop, you can do it, you can wear them together, but Polar's advice is to wear one at a time. Now, here's why. For your daily totals like sleep, activity and calories, Flow compares the timestamps from both devices and then prioritizes the highest value provided both are synced correctly. And for workouts, you'll get a duplicate activity file and a duplicate training load, so you'll want to delete that extra one. Steps are synced across the ecosystem, but again, the back end resolves overlaps by choosing the highest time aligned data. So that means basically, if your watch counted 20 steps and your loop counted 30 during the same time span, the app will count 30, so the highest one. However, if the timestamps are just slightly misaligned, maybe you didn't sync your loop for a while and the timestamp is a bit off, you might just be doubling your step count because the timestamps aren't perfectly aligned. Maybe you walked for a few minutes and the loop was one or two minutes off. That basically means it counts it as one or two extra minutes of walking. And as I said, at launch, there's only a wristband option, no biceps band for the loop, which is sad since that usually leads to better heart rate tracking, but it might be there in the future. But let's now move on to the next important change, something that needed to be improved, Polar Flow. Currently, the app of the Whoop Strap is a lot better than Polar's app in my opinion, at least when it comes to health tracking and health insights. Polar has announced that they are working on revamping the Polar Flow app, though much of it is still scheduled for the future. Now, the app remains free and there's no subscription for any of the core features. Everything that's free now stays free and your data stays within the Polar EU-based ecosystem, which is good because we generally have stricter privacy laws here in Europe with the ability to view, export, or permanently delete your data. Now, Polar is rebuilding the Flow app in phases, so it will be a slow progression with the first visible changes coming on Android first and later on iOS. Usually many manufacturers do it the other way around, so it's cool that it's coming on Android first, but I guess that's for practical reasons. Now, things that they sort of promised as this rolls out is a refreshed UI, more medium and long-term trend view, so easier to view your data, more data analysis, and far more customization. Things setting your personal goals, choosing what appears on your landing screen, and free form tagging for your exercises. They're also adding more frequent sort of check-ins or feedback that give you your achievements and progress at what they call the right moments. Importantly, again, this overhaul is still very much a work in progress and Polar hasn't given a hard release date for all of these phases. And of course, even though there isn't a membership at the moment, like Garmin, they might at some point add more and more features that are paid. They didn't allude to this, but it might always be coming. Garmin said, for instance, with Connect Plus that all the core features will remain free, but I'm a bit afraid that Garmin will prioritize the development of Connect Plus and not the free version of Garmin Connect, but we'll have to see how it goes for Garmin and also for Polar. If you're a longtime Polar user, note that the Polar Beat app also continues to exist. As far as I understand it, you cannot connect the Polar Loop to it, but it will continue to exist. Now, based on all this information, how does the Loop stack up against the Whoop Strap I also just realized that loop and whoop sound very similar, but okay, how do they stack up against each other? Well, conceptually, they're of course very similar. Both are screenless, 24 seven wearables that prioritize automatic tracking, sleep staging, and heart rate, heart rate variability based recovery and an app first experience. Now, one big difference is of course the business model and the price. Loop is a one-time purchase and you get all the features for free, whereas Whoop you have to pay on a yearly or monthly basis. Now over a year or two, Loop will turn out to be dramatically cheaper. Battery and charging are also different. The Loop promises up to eight days on a standard USB-C cable, but you have to take it off and charge it, whereas the Whoop typically runs for 14 plus days but it has a cool charging mechanism. Let me show you. So Whoop has this little pod thing that you can just pop on and it will charge the device without you having to remove it. So you can truly wear it 24 seven all year round. I would still clean it and take it off every once in a while, but it is a bit easier. You don't really have to think about it. You cannot really forget your Whoop. You just pop it on and it's always on you. 
Also, Whoop does allow heart rate broadcasting to some third-party platforms, whereas Loop limits you to a single Bluetooth link and won't broadcast your heart rate. Now, actually, none of these bands and straps that have been released have GPS built in, so you always need to have your phone with you. Also, at the moment, the app of the Whoop Trap is one of the best apps, in my opinion, much better than the current version of the Polar Flow app. I think it's just so much easier to get your sleep health and workout insights on the Whoop app than on the Polar Flow app. So this is the Whoop app right here. And I just like that overview a lot better than I get in the Polar Flow app. But we'll have to see how the current Polar Flow app develops since we cannot really rely on promises, but I have high hopes for it. Hi, Rob from the future here. So I sent an email to Polar with a few follow-up questions and I wanted to include a few to clarify some things. So first of all, about the heart rate sensor. So indeed, they confirm that the Loop has the Precision Prime optical heart rate sensor, so the same as in the Ignite 2 and the Pacer. However, they also mention that the algorithm underneath it, so it translates to a raw signal to the actual heart rate, has been updated to the latest version. So it should be more similar to the high-end watches like the Vantage V3 and the Grid X2 Pro. So basically they're saying that the main difference between the sensor in the loop and that in the higher end sensors is the absence of ECG and SpO2 in the loop. However, of course, because the actual sensor module is different, there might actually be a difference in performance. But of course, I'll be putting that to the test. And then another thing is about the frequency of the heart rate measurement. So it will be different depending on how active you're being. What they say exactly is still a bit unclear to me. So another future Rob will clarify this further. But basically what they're saying is that during periods of high or low activity, flow switches to showing heart rate at one second resolution for more accuracy. So basically what I think they're saying is a high activity, you will have a one second resolution of your heart rate data. But then the other thing is not clear. So maybe they mean one minute. They say when measuring the lowest heart rate at night and the maximum heart rate during high intensity, the interval is one second. So again, one second. So I'll clarify that even more later. But one more thing that changed is before they mentioned there would be customizable training targets in the Flow app, but now they are ready-made training targets. That's also a small difference. But future Rob will clarify that final thing about the resolution of the heart rate. Okay, future, future Rob here. I just got an update from Polar. So what's actually happening is the loop is always measuring at a heart rate frequency of one hertz, so one time per second. However, in the app, you only see the one hertz during the night, so when you're sleeping basically, or during an activity. And during the other parts of your day, it's at a lower unspecified resolution. So basically the device is always measuring one hertz. I hope that also means that in the back end, it is saving a one hertz resolution. So if you later want to clarify that maybe you were doing activity between a certain time that wasn't logged you will still get that one hertz resolution but it's good to know that they're measuring at a high frequency all the time so who's the loop actually for well if you want the sort of simplicity of the whoop strap and recovery driven insights without a monthly fee it might just be for you but we'll have to wait to actually get our hands on it to actually test its performance because heart rate tracking hasn't always been a strong suit of polar in my testing now if you already train with a polar watch and you want something really light for your sleep and your everyday wear without adding another screen loop does fill that gap very nicely and it rolls everything into the same flow account However, if you don't mind wearing a watch, there's no real upside to adding a loop and it might actually complicate your life quite a bit. You might actually get less reliable metrics in the app because the two devices will be syncing independently to your app and you'll have to remove some of them and some of them might be counted twice. Also, if you need multi-device heart rate broadcasting, or you want some kind of interaction with your device, a different product might be better for you. My early take is that in this sort of category of wear it and forget it, Polar has made a product at a very appealing price point, but the quality of the heart rate measurements, the sleep tracking and the app experience still have to prove themselves before I can actually recommend it. The Polar Flow app redesign looks really promising, more trends, more customization, better daily engagement, but it's not there yet. Let's hope that the Polar Loop and the app live up to their promise and that Whoop might see quite a few customers switching over to Polar. If you want to see my testing when Polar sends all these devices to reviewers, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want early access to some of my videos and support the channel, consider becoming a YouTube member. That really helps me keep the channel going. I'm running this next to my full-time job as a scientist and buying many of these devices and paying my editor Alex is not cheap. Or you can also use some of my affiliate links below to get yourself the best discount possible. Check out this video right here on the Whoop Strap 
or this video on the HSleep pod.